Want to know how to time your cloud functions? Of course you do. Well, good news. I'm going to show you how to schedule the execution of a function on this episode of Firecast. Today, I'll show you how to implement a feature that developers ask about a lot, cron jobs. Cron is used to schedule commands or shell scripts to run periodically. You might be interested in running your functions in the same way. For my app, I'd like to send an email once a week to new users, inviting them to visit the app and telling them about its features. Now, there are a couple of ways to implement cron jobs using Cloud Functions, using an external service or configuring an instance of App Engine. I'll be using an external service, cronjob.org. But if you're interested in learning how to create an App Engine instance to schedule events, then check out this blog post by Abe Haskins. The link can be found below. Here are the steps I'll be taking to configure my weekly email. I'll create a Cloud Function that's triggered by an HTTP request to a dedicated URL. The event handler for an HTTP function is triggered when an incoming request occurs. It supports two HTTP-specific arguments, which are the express request and response objects. The request object has properties for the request issued by the client. The response object lets you specify the response to the client. This function I'm writing will compile a list of new users' emails from the database. It will then send those users an email inviting them to visit the app. After I deploy the function, I'll get its dedicated URL. I will then set up a cron job to ping that URL. Let's get started with creating the HTTP trigger function. I'll start in the terminal and go to my projects directory, then install the required dependencies. If you've seen some of my other Firecasts, you've probably seen the Firebase admin module before. If you'd like to know more about the admin SDK, check out the Firecast on cloud storage triggers or the documentation. Links are below. I'm using a third-party utility, NodeMailer, to handle sending the email. If you're using NPM 5.0 or later, you don't need to include the save, but I'll use it here to show how to install the dependencies if you're using an earlier version of NPM. OK, I've installed the dependencies. Now I'll open index.js. I'll require the Firebase Functions module, as I always do when using Cloud Functions. I'll require Firebase Admin, which I'll use to access the database and I'll initialize the app with the default Firebase configuration. I'll also require the node mailer module. I'll need to create a transporter object to send the email. The transporter object is used by node mailer to determine how to deal with the mail server to use for delivering messages. I'll configure the transporter object to route email through Gmail, which requires the email and password of a Google account. Now here, I just hard coded my email and password into my code for the purpose of this example but it's better to use environment configuration to specify these sort of things. If you're interested in finding out more about configuring your environment, check out the links below. Now keep in mind that Gmail does have an email sending quota. So if you need to send more than 500 emails in a day, you want to choose a service designed for this purpose. In a production environment, you should use a professional email sending platform like SendGrid, Mailgun, or MailJet. Find out more in the links below. But Gmail works well for showcasing this example. Of course, before I send the emails, I need to know who to send them to. My database structure looks like this. I have a child called users. The children of users are UIDs. Under each user is the contents of the profile, including email and sign up date, which are the two children I care about right now. I'm going to be making a query to the database child users that orders the children by sign up date and then queries all users whose sign up date is within the past week. I'll put the emails in an array of strings and then use the JavaScript array method join to put them together as one string. Here we go. I'll create and export a function called weekly email that's triggered by an HTTP request. I'll get the current time in milliseconds and then use this to compute the time seven days ago. I'll then create an array to hold the emails. I'll query the database child users, ordering the children by the value of sign date starting at the time seven days ago. Then I'll iterate through the users, getting their emails and adding them to the array. Once I have an array containing the emails, I can choose my email options and send the message. I'm just going to send a simple line of text for the sake of the example, but there are lots of other mail options, including attachments and HTML. Check out the node mailer docs for details. Links are below. All right, let's send these emails. I'll need the email addresses to configure the email, so I'll return the email's array. 
I'm going to use the then method so that the email is only sent after I have all of the emails in the array. I'll log which addresses to send the email to. The JavaScript join function joins the elements of an array in a single string, separating elements with a comma. You can also pass a different separator as a parameter, but conveniently, I need to separate emails with commas, so I don't need to worry about this. I'll create an object to hold all of the mail options. I'll put my business's email as from and use BCC so users can't see who else received the email. I'll add a simple subject and some text, thanking them for downloading my app. I'll call send mail, which returns a promise that's resolved when the email is sent. Finally, I'll return a response to clean up the function. Either the emails were sent or there was an error. My function is now ready to go, but of course, I still need to set up the cron job. This process may be different depending on which service you decide to use. Now, if you're concerned about the security of the function and you don't want just anyone triggering it if they have the URL, then you can set up a key to verify the sender is authorized to trigger the function. I won't cover that now for the sake of time, but you can find an example in the function samples linked below. All right, let's deploy this function and try it out. I've already populated the database with some dummy accounts with my email address, so I can confirm the function was successful. I'll run Firebase deploy. I'll add the link to my cron job to trigger once a week. Of course, I don't have to wait a week for the cron job to trigger to check if this works. I'll just paste the URL into my browser. The response tells me the email was sent, and I can see in my inbox here. Finally, I can see the function logs in the Firebase console. And there you have it, a cloud function set up to trigger at a chosen interval and send out an email. You can check out the other Firecasts to see more ways to use cloud functions. To find out about the latest videos on cloud functions and other Firebase features, subscribe to the Firebase YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in another episode of Firecasts.